Hello, this is the Bible in Fewer Words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 219, the book of Hosea, chapters 6 through 14. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. Looks like we're going to get done with Hosea today. We are. It's quite a few chapters, but they're small, and a lot of them are poems. Oh, poetry. Yeah, and I don't do poetry too well. <laughs> so Let's see how you do. I'm just going to be taking a few of the lines out of the poem that seem most interesting. Our listeners may want to read it for themselves. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing the poets are not still alive to come after you to yeah. say, you're editing my poem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Chapter 6, verse 1. Let's return to God. He has torn us and will heal us. He'll revive us after two days, and on the third day, he'll raise us up. Like the resurrection? Yeah. A lot of Christians use this verse from Hosea to say that this is referring to Jesus. Hmm. The writer of this knew nothing about Jesus. He was talking about Israel, that God has torn us. He's kind of punished us, right? <laughs> Messing with us. Yeah. But he's going to forgive us soon. I don't know about the three days thing. That's weird. Yeah. So verse 5. I, God, killed Ephraim and Judah with the words of my mouth. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. The priests commit lewdness. There is whoredom in Ephraim. Yeah, that's all of chapter (laughs) (laughs) 6. Okay. So it's kind of just strange stuff like that. Yeah, just kind of thrown together. Mm -hmm. Chapter 7. I would have healed Israel, but Ephraim and Samaria were wicked. They are all adulterers. Ephraim has mixed with other people. Strangers have devoured its strength. I'll spread my net upon them. Woe unto them, because they have run away from me, and because they have disobeyed me. I guess this is still God talking. Uh Uh-huh. And they didn't cry to me when they howled on their beds. Their princes will die by the sword for what they said. Chapter 8. Put a trumpet to your lips. (laughs) (laughs) Stick a cork in it. (laughs) Israel has kings that I didn't select, and princes without my knowledge. They have sown the wind and shall reap the whirlwind. Yeah, that's a famous one. Have you heard that before? No. If you sow the wind, you'll reap the whirlwind. Ephraim has hired lovers. I'll burn the cities in Israel and Judah. I suppose that's God again. I suppose. Who else talks like that? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay, chapter 9. Don't be happy, Israel, because you've gone a-whoring from your God. You've had sex on every threshing floor. A threshing floor, is that like a place in a barn? I think it's where you thresh wheat. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like in a barn. Had sex in the barn. (laughs) Yeah. The prophet is a fool, and the spiritual man is mad. As for Ephraim, I will kill their children. What will you give them, God? Give them miscarrying wombs and dry breasts. I hated them for their wickedness. I will love them no more. I will kill their children, whom they dearly love. God will throw them away, since they didn't listen to him. (laughs) (laughs) So it's not God talking anymore. No, it is. All this is God. (laughs) You know, the trouble is, it really does go like that. Uh Uh-huh. One verse uses the pronoun I, and then the other one refers to God in the third person. It's all God doing this stuff that we're talking about here. I hope everyone got the picture here. Mm Mm-hmm. He's mad at Ephraim because they've been having sex on every threshing floor. They're worshiping other gods, and that's to him having sex with other gods. He's going to punish them by killing their children and making their women miscarry and giving them dry breasts. And then killing their children, too. Chapter 10. The thorn and the thistle will say to the mountains, Cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. Thorn and the Thistle, isn't that like an Irish music? (laughs) I think it's a show on NPR, (laughs) isn't it? (laughs) Conflict will break out among the people. Mothers will be dashed in pieces with their children. All right, this is turning dark. Oh, it's very dark. Yeah. Yeah. Chapter 11. When Israel was a child, I called him out of Egypt. 
Now, this is something that's used in the New Testament, in the book of Matthew. One of the things that happens is that Herod is trying to kill all the babies oh, yes, because yes, he's yes. heard about Jesus. So they have to go to Egypt. They escape to Egypt. And when they hear that Herod has been killed, so it's mm-hmm. safe to come home, mm-hmm. then they come back. What happens in the book of Matthew is different than what happens in the book of Luke. They both have to get him somehow to Nazareth to be born in Bethlehem. And they go to Bethlehem because it's a census. The Gospel of Matthew uses this verse to refer to Jesus. And God is calling him out of Egypt to get away from Herod because Herod was killing all the, the babies, babies, right? Yeah. So they went to Egypt and then they had to come back. And so this is supposedly, and according to the Gospel of Matthew, referring to Jesus. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's obviously when you read it in context, he's it's referring to Israel and it's talking about the Exodus. Yes. Verse 6, the sword will kill the people in Ephraim cities. God will roar like a lion and the people will tremble. Whenever Hosea is talking about Ephraim, he's really talking about Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Chapter 12, Ephraim feeds on the wind. Jacob fought with an angel and won. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. In Genesis chapter 32, Jacob fights with the angel and wins. Mm-hmm. And that was also our episode 16. Okay. When Ephraim offended me with Baal, he died. This is Israel worshiping Baal. Yep. Okay. And he died. I don't know what he means by that because Israel didn't die, but... <laughs> so he's talking about Ephraim like he's a person. Yeah. But he, it's always... Yeah. It's Israel. Israel didn't die, but there's this always is, bad stuff happening Yeah, Israel. bad stuff's happening, and bad stuff's really going to happen. Israel's going to get conquered by the Assyrians here pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Because he, the book of Hosea was written just before the Assyrians conquered Israel. So, okay, so maybe that's what this is referring yeah, to? the dying. Yeah, I don't know. I'll rip them apart like a lion or a leopard and eat them. So this is God talking again. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm getting used to that talk. <laughs> uh-huh. I'll send plagues and destruction, but repentance will be hidden from my eyes. So even if they repent, he's not going to see it because mm-hmm. it's going to be hidden from him. Yeah. yeah. God's wind will come and make the land desolate. Samaria rebelled against God, so they will die by the sword. Their children will be dashed in pieces and their pregnant women ripped apart. Time to go to bed, children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, and one more chapter. Yeah. Chapter 14, the last chapter of Hosea. Yeah. We won't ride on horses. Israel smells like Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like the smell of Lebanon. <laughs> and we won't ride on horses, though. We just won't do it. <laughs> no. Ephraim will say, I'm like a green fir tree. Your fruit's on my tree. Okay. (laughs) Wise people will understand these things. Well, okay, I guess I am not wise. Hmm. So that's it. That's the end of Hosea. Yes, it is. (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of exciting in a way and kind of depressing in another way. Yeah. Yeah. God is being weird. Uh Uh-huh. For sure. And cruel. So our next book's coming up. Mm Mm-hmm. Is? Joel. Oh, don't hear much about Joel, do you? No. Well, I didn't hear much about Hosea either, right? No. The shorter book. So we'll get through it in one, one episode, I think. Great. All right. Well, thanks, Steve, for sharing this half of Hosea with us. <laughs> sure. And listeners, you're making it through the Bible bit by bit. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.